Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanna to talk about my personal best friend inside of Premiere Pro, the Transform tool. I can't stress to you guys enough just how much I use this tool when I'm editing my concert recap videos. It's super powerful. I feel like it allows you some more freedom as far as keyframing, and there's actually some things that you can do inside the tool to add some other effects to your videos or your transitions. I recently put out a video where I did a recap for Gimme Gimme Disco at Hampton Beach at the Casino Ballroom. This was a super fun on shoot. I was so happy with the final product. The reason that I'm bringing up the transform tool is because I used it all throughout the project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys the sequences and the clips before and after I use the transform tool minus any other extra effects that I might put on the clips such as warp stabilizer or the color grading. I just want to show you guys the flat footage straight out of my camera before I do any kind of changes to it just so you can get an idea of how strong it really is. So now that you guys have seen this sequence without the transform tool, without the changes in editing that I did, let's go through the sequence post editing that I had in the final product so you guys can see how I went about utilizing the tool. So the first thing I wanna mention here is that in this six clip sequence, each one of these clips are seven frames long. I've done this effect before and it's actually one of my first videos that I ever did on my channel. If you guys are interested, you can go give that a look. So I'm more or less using the transform tool to add motion blur and keyframe the scale throughout the six clips. So if we start on the first clip here, we go into our transform tool. You can see the keyframes that I have set here. I'm gonna redo it and start from scratch just so you guys can follow along with me. So drag your transform tool onto your clip. Now we're gonna deselect composition shutter angle. For this sequence, I just set the shutter angle to 180. If you want the motion blur to be stronger, you can actually up it to 360. I found that 180 was the perfect middle ground here. So it's really simple. We just need to keyframe the scale here at the beginning, bring our playhead to the end. I'm gonna set it to 170. Now I need to make sure I drag this keyframe all the way to the end. Don't forget that. I also bezier the keyframes, which adds a little bit of a different movement to the keyframes, I guess you could say. So now we've got that motion blur, zoom in look. Now the great thing here is that we can copy this transform tool by pressing control C, highlighting all of the clips that you wanna paste that effect onto, where the keyframes are exactly, and control V to paste it onto the clips. This only works because each one of the clips is seven frames long, so the keyframing distance is gonna be the exact same. And the biggest thing when you're doing this effect is you wanna have a subject that you're zooming in on or something that the audience can at least retain for the short amount of time that you're gonna be showing the clip. So for most of these, I almost always zoomed in to the subjects and their faces. And if for some reason when you're doing this effect and you're zooming in and you're realizing that, you know, the subject's just not where you want it to be, this is a great example because if I didn't keyframe the position here, Look where this is zooming in. It's just zooming into her hand. It doesn't really make any sense. It just doesn't look good. So what I did instead was I zoomed out and I made sure to keyframe my position. So I might even move this down, keyframe my position and bring it to the end. I still want their faces to be in the frame. So I'm gonna drag my position up. Now they're way more in the frame and I feel like that just looks way better. The way I looked at it is these first three clips, I'll do a zoom in and in the last three clips, I'll do a zoom out. So it's like half and half. So instead I just set my scale to 170 that way it's zoomed in, came out, set my keyframe, dragged it to the end, beziered the keyframes. So then it's a zoom out instead. We did just go through setting the keyframes for our position if we need to move the clips up here in the motion tab, but you can also do that in the position tab underneath transform. I just wanted to mention that to you guys. So let's break down this last sequence here. So given that I'm zooming out on this last clip, I wanted to match that movement coming into this clip here. So what I did is I used the transform tool again, turned up my motion blur, my shutter angle to 360, scaled it in 170 at the beginning, keyframed it, brought it out to about here, which matched up with the music. So basically back to 100 and then I scaled it back up again so I set another keyframe and I think I went all the way up to 140 towards the end again I beziered all these keyframes you can just right click bezier it just kind of smooths the transition of the keyframes throughout the clip so we follow the movement from the last clip zoom out and then we start zooming back in because in the next clip 
we do a zoom in at the beginning of it as well. As you see, if we go frame by frame here, there's a zoom in at the beginning of this clip and a tiny one here at the beginning. Again, I just set my transform tool on this clip, keyframed the scale accordingly, set my value to looks like 120 here, and then I slowed it down. And then I went from 120, brought it back to about 110 here, and then I came all the way back to 100. Now the distance that I have between these two keyframes is gonna affect just how strong that motion blur is and how fast the zoom in or zoom out happens. So keep that in mind when you're setting your keyframes. And then as we come back out here into the next clip, we have a zoom out. And the reason this worked so well is that because in the original unedited clip, I actually was already zooming out with my zoom lens when I was filming this. So the movement just kind of worked out already. I did have to use a little bit of warp stabilizer just to stabilize the motion a little bit, but I did go ahead and apply my transform tool again on my scale. As you can see, I only set it to the end of the clip because there's no reason for me to scale out. I could if I wanted to, but I'm already zooming out. So why would I do it inside the transform tool? As I transitioned from this zoom out, I just used the way I shot it to transition between both clips. I hope that makes sense. So then towards the end of the clip, I just used the transform tool again, set my shutter angle to 180. And I think I did a distance of one, two, it might be two or three frames, made sure to scale it in, I think to like 130 at the end of the clip here. All right, basically I'm zooming out and then we come back in. And again, at the beginning of this clip, I just set my scale in position to zoom in over the course of the clip because I wanted the focus to be on this girl because in this clip I'm zooming out of her face so when we come back in here I wanted her to be the focus of it so I made sure to set my position keyframe to move accordingly to her face towards the end here. And one last time, we're kind of just repeating the steps, just changing up the keyframes a little bit. We're zooming in to this clip here, which you can see I have nested. Now let's quickly break down why this is nested. I actually speed ramped this clip, which you can see up here. Adding keyframes to speed ramped clips doesn't always work because the keyframes and the speed, it just throws each other off. I also needed to add warp stabilizer, but you can't put warp stabilizer on a clip that has any speed changes. You're just gonna get that error message warp stabilizer and time remapping can't be used on the same clip. So once I nested that sequence, I could put the warp stabilizer on it and I saved my keyframing for after I did all of that. So I basically nested it, put my warp stabilizer on, and then if we're following the motion of the last clip here, we're zooming in. I did the same thing here. You can see I upped my shutter angle to 360, brought the keyframing from the scale up to 140, slowly eased it back out. And then as we got back to the end here, I set it back to 100. So it kind of follows the speed ramping that I had at the beginning and at the end. So I hope that put the transform tool into perspective for you guys and just shows how strong it is. I utilize it across all my videos, such a great tool. I hope I was able to give you guys some ideas on how you can go about using it for your concert videos or just any video in general. Let me know how it works for you guys. If you end up using it, I would love to see your guys' work. For anyone that's new here or hasn't caught on yet, I do have a TikTok, which I've been posting there pretty regularly. I also have an Instagram where I post a little bit as well. You can see a little bit more in my personal life. And again, if you guys haven't had a chance to go look at the full recap video that I did, you guys can go find that on my channel as well. Love making these tutorials. Let me know if you have any questions. And as always, I appreciate you guys watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.